Navigate on Autopilot is finally here. The real, the real version of the Navigate on Autopilot is finally here. And I think people are not giving it enough credit because it is absolutely amazing. And it's truly the first step and a first glimpse of what the self-driving future is going to be. It's not flashy. It just works. But I got to tell you, I, it's been a long, long way. I have an Autopilot 1.0. Uh, on my car in my garage that's about four years old and wow what what uh, an, an amazing uh, step forward i'm going to tell you how it works just in case if you don't know and but uh, most importantly i'll tell you how it fits in into our future not just for tesla but for all of the electric cars let's talk about it right now Welcome to E4Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, all you have to do is click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, I have been a, a big critic of the Tesla's autopilot uh, road to wh what it is right now. It did not navigate itself very well, <laughs> pun intended, uh, to, to today's version. Um, now, just like I mentioned, I still have a 1.0 version and I'm still pretty happy with it. It does what it does. Uh, and kudos to uh, the Mobile Eye, the original maker of the Autopilot 1.0. But what happened since have left a lot of uh, customers unhappy. Uh, it, it's been up and down. But what's rolling out right now, the real true Navigator and Autopilot is absolutely amazing. Now, let me show you the video as I'm talking about it. It's not really flashy. Basically, um, it is once you get on a freeway, once you are on an on-ramp, you can let it go. And it, as long as you're navigating somewhere, obviously, as long as it knows where to go, it will navigate you through the through your journey on your on the freeway or freeways and get you to your exit. So what it's able to do, it's able to merge and figure out which exits to take. But most importantly, it's able to change lanes now. Now, in the version that uh, was rolled out before, um, and that's the, the only demo that they have on their website and on their YouTube channel, is where you had to confirm every time it wanted to change the lane. And to me, that was kind of lame. So now, the version that's coming out right now, you don't have to do it. It's literally just navigating itself through the traffic. And on top of that, I, another thing many people know that if the lane that you're in is going too slow, and the lane next to you is going faster. It will figure that out and put you in that lane so you can go faster and get to your destination sooner. Um, you get to pick uh, whether or not you want the confirmation or not for the uh, for the turn signals, but you also get to pick how aggressive the car is going to be uh, changing lanes with a Mad Max mode as well. I'm assuming for LA traffic. Um, so th that's it now. Yes, you still have to keep your hands on the wheel. As a matter of fact, if you don't keep, don't keep it, not only it will uh, give you warnings, it actually will stop, stop working altogether. It won't change lanes. But, and again, that we'll talk about it in a second. Um, this, be, besides that, it is a true, fully self-driving feature as you know for for the car on the freeway and it you know the the only other thing that i was just as amused by as i am abused by this is the uh, parking lot summon uh, where your car can just come out of the parking spot meet you in front of the store meet, meet you in front of the house uh, to me that's probably the most impressive one but this one is something that people will be using more um, than the uh, parking lot summon i'm assuming uh, and it really is absolutely amazing now uh, you know it, on one hand we've been kind of spoiled on another hand we had so many problems you know promises broken promises and so forth and and you know just like even with this rollout we had to uh, wait for the non-confirmation uh, uh, version of it um, and it's been a long road and i really really truly see now what this is bringing us, how this is bringing us to the future. Now, how does this compare to other manufacturers, automakers? There's obviously Waymo and a few other uh, self-driving uh, 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 technologies out there. So let's talk about it because um, Tesla is definitely ahead of them in this one particular category. And I don't even know if you know if if, if that's if that's the way to measure this or what Waymo is doing is the way to measure the success of the self-driving technology. Now, before I talk about that, let me just remind you. 
that this video and this channel is uh, sponsored by Accelerate Auto, the extended auto warranty for all electric cars, including Tesla Model 3, up to 125,000 mile coverage, only $100 deductibles. And on top of that, you get $100 off with a discount code that you can find in the description of this video, uh, among, along with the link to Xcare EV protection. So check that out. All right. So how does this how does uh navigate autopilot uh, on autopilot compared to um, other companies like waymo so the technology is very different uh the the tesla technology from what we know is a true ai technology where the car figures things out around it um and it doesn't use lidar which i think might my my, my me well we'll see uh many pretty much everybody else is using uh, uh lidars um, but uh, companies like Waymo and many other other ones that ha have been considered to be way ahead of Tesla, they are they believe to be using 3D maps where you kind of map out the area very carefully um, in a particular uh, city or even a neighborhood, and then the car can navigate there. Now Waymo has already been doing driverless, literally no driver in their in their cars. Uh, uh, the pilot is in Arizona. And there are reports that people are very unhappy with it because that car is driving like your grandma very, very carefully. And I think this is also what's going to happen with the Tesla's uh, parking lot summon. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, they do have the technology as well. Um, I don't know the answer. And let me know in the comment section if you have an opinion on this, whether ever the, the entire world needs to be mapped out for the self-driving features to work um, using the uh, LiDAR and, and it does really well. Or something that Tesla does where they navigate an autopilot and many other features. Uh, will come from uh, uh, the, the artificial intelligence that kind of recognizes what's going on, has the database uh, of um, obviously previous trips from many, many, many other miles and drivers and so forth, um, recognizes the local signs and just, just but, but at the same time functions as a person. Um, now, I, I should also mention that the whole holding uh, hands on the steel, well, let, let me move on to the positives and negatives and we'll talk about it right now as well. So, the um <laughs> why why does this uh, graphics always start with me i forget what what what's supposed to happen even though i'm the one that do the design it right uh thank god i'm not working on uh, autopilot features right okay so um the the positive is of course this is this is a, a an amazing technology and those uh, of us, I was going to say of us, well, those of you guys who are lucky to have the uh, the latest hardware and mainly Model 3 owners right now are able to enjoy it. Of course, as always, I say the same thing. It pushes everybody else who are not like very, they're, they're very far behind right now. Everybody else to, to, to hopefully try to catch up to Tesla and come up with the self-driving technologies in those cars. So that is absolutely unbelievable. And I think when people see how awesome Teslas are, they, they will also think that electric car technology uh, is, is part of it, which it is. Now, of course, the self-driving features don't have to be on an electric car per se, but the fact that they are, it kind of shows you that electric cars are the future and the high-tech cars that everybody should want. Now, let's talk about negatives because um, the negative uh, uh, part here is that you know, still, and this is not really Tesla's fault. I'm just saying that the, the, in our universe right now, you have to keep your hands on the wheel. And this is why I don't care to have the autopilot in my car or the next car that I'm going to buy, which could be Tesla still. Uh, but if I am going to get it, I'm probably not going to get the um, the autopilot because what is the point if I have to keep my uh, eyes on the road and hands on the wheel? Um, it's literally like, uh, you know, having an autopilot, uh, you know, ne next to you who, who's just holding your hands over the wheel over your hands. So, no, but a lot, I know a lot of people enjoy it. And again, the technology is amazing. It's really up to the regulators. And I hope uh, the, the, once the, the technology is proven that it can do much better than human beings, which I don't think is a very high, high bar to beat. Um, I hope the regulators, especially here in California, will be able to start letting uh, this feature go. And by the way, just so you know, the original feature did not have that stipulation where you had to ke uh, keep your hands on the wheel. Um, and it just kind of came uh, came in about half a year or a year after, well, after all of this uh, accidents and so forth. Um, 
Now, by the way, let me remind you guys, don't forget to sign up for our VIP list, which is uh, basically on a weekly basis. You'll be able to receive exclusive content and stories and offers and so forth. So go to e4electric.com slash VIP, which is in the description of this video. And I want to thank uh, one of my newer Patreons, uh, Sean Frakes. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. The only place where you can watch me live. Um, thank you to all of my patrons for supporting me uh, and contributing to this independent channel. All right, let me know. Uh, what do you guys think? Other than that, see you next time. And remember to stay charged.